before you today. Lord, we thank you, God, for who you are, Lord, for your kindness, your mercy, your provision. Lord, we ask that you would just be in this service today, Lord, that you would move, that you would have your way. Lord, speak to our hearts. Um, just help us to become more like you, Jesus, and just um, touch us today. In your name we pray. Amen.
uh, up to the Lord. If you have offerings to give, you can just put them in the bucket here in the front. Uh, and those of you uh, online, you can just mail it in or however you prefer to give. Lord Jesus, we love you this morning. We just thank you for the opportunity of coming together in your name to worship you, Lord Jesus, to just give you praise and honor. We just ask right now, Lord, as we bring our tithes and offerings unto you, that you would bless that form of worship as well. Lord, bless the gift, bless the giver. You know the needs. We just ask you to meet those needs this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Can we lift our hands, our voices to the Lord this morning? Lord, we worship you today. We thank you, Jesus, that those circumstances change. You do not change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, you took stripes on your back over 2,000 years ago for our healing. Lord, that healing is physical. That healing is emotional. That healing can be spiritual. Lord, you're able to make us whole this morning. God, we just worship you for that. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for the stripes that you took upon your back. The devil cannot win because, Lord, you defeated him over 2,000 years ago. And you made provision for us to have life and life more abundantly. Lord, we just worship you. We thank you this morning. We give you our hearts. Have your way in the remainder of this service this morning. Teach us, draw us closer to you as we're in your presence. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. I want us to look at a couple of scriptures uh, regarding healing. And I'm probably going to have Zoe come back up in a moment. So maybe if Brianna could put the scriptures up. I want us to look at a couple of scriptures regarding healing today. And I felt in my spirit this week, and I know several of my friends who are ministers obviously felt the same thing. We didn't have a conference and talk about it uh, other than a conference with the Holy Spirit. Amen? In prayer. Isn't it amazing when God's doing that all across our nation, maybe even all across the world? It's God that does that. Uh, we don't share notes, but there's been a lot of talk about healing. I believe the Lord uh, was saying to me this week, there's going to be, uh, like we've seen in the early uh, church here in America, the Pentecostal church at least, since uh, the turn of the century when Azusa Street happened, they used to see people at tent meetings, A.A. A. Allen, Oral Roberts, other uh, preachers that were Pentecostal who believed in divine healing. They used to cart people to these services, these tent meetings, by the ambulance load, by the truck load, and see people healed. And I felt in my spirit that God is going to do that again. We're going to see that again before uh, Jesus returns. And there's a lot of people right now who are sick or needing healing, either physically, emotionally, spiritually. So what's the devil trying to do? If that's God's plan, I believe it is. And I heard several other preachers, Brother Swagger has said that, Bob Cornell and Sharon were talking about it yesterday, about healing, and that God is getting ready to send a healing movement again, like we saw in the early uh, turn of the century. So what does the devil do? He tries to make everybody sick, and mess with our heads, and mess with our thinking, Get us to rely on our five senses. But faith is in the unseen. Amen. And I believe there's healing. And if you're listening this morning. And the devil's got your mind all wrapped up with COVID-19. And worried about getting sick. Or you've got some other sickness or ailment. Uh, we need to plead the blood of Jesus against that. Amen. And trust. I believe God is saying in the spirit. That there's going to be a movement of healing again. As we look to Jesus and we look to the cross, we're not going to chase the healers. Unfortunately, that's what happened with some of the early uh, turn of the century meetings. We were chasing the miracles and the signs. But if we look to Jesus and we look to the cross, I believe we're going to see a movement of healing that may even eclipse what we saw or what we've read about. Maybe we weren't there, but we've read about what happened at these tent revivals. I know at uh, Oral Roberts... Um, church in Tulsa, they have a room with all the crutches and wheelchairs. And I think Amy Simple McPherson as well at the uh, Angelus Temple, or it may, be, it may have been moved to a museum now, it used to be an Angelus Temple, had all of the evidence of people who had been healed and pictures of those meetings. We need to say, God, do it again. Amen? And if we need a healing touch today, reach out to the Lord. There's some scriptures I want us to read. If you can just put those up on the screen for me, uh, Brianna, I'll read them off the screen. Isaiah 53, 5. All of us know this. When the enemy's stirring your, your mind up with the what ifs and what you sense with your five senses, go to the Word. Amen. Stand on the Word of God. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes, we are healed. Amen. We need to stand on that today. Whatever your need is, emotional, physical, spiritual, Jesus wants to heal you today. I'm not here to preach. I feel like I could. <laughs> but I want you to know today, the purpose of this refuel is to get refreshed, to get renewed, to get refueled in God's presence. 
And sometimes the Word of God is the best thing to help us with that. The Word is what increases our faith. Stand on His Word today. If you have a need for healing, Isaiah 53, 5. Look that up and keep reading it until your healing comes. And it says we are healed, present tense. Amen? Jesus has paid a price, past tense, so that today, present tense, we could be healed. And let's believe the Lord for that. I think they have a couple others on there. Jeremiah 17, 14. I've had this, uh, my girls printed out some scriptures for me uh, through, through the health battle that I've been having the last several weeks. And this is on our wall at home. And this is a good one. Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Stand on that scripture, amen? If God heals us, sometimes you go to the doctor and you begin to wonder. <laughs> we do have to remember that, as they say, they're practicing medicine, right? right. Uh, they may not have perfected it, all of them, yet. And I thank God for doctors. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Just a little bit of humor there. But when we go to the, to the Lord, the great physician, and He heals us, He heals from the source of the problem, amen? You may have one symptom that you know of or that the doctors have indicated, but Jesus sees the bigger picture. He sees not only your physical need, but many times people were brought to Jesus in His earthly ministry, and their greatest need was spiritual. And He dealt with the physical need, but it was second or third. He dealt with the spiritual need first. And so let's believe the Lord with this verse today. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Heal my mind. Heal my emotions. Heal my physical body. Heal my spirit. Maybe that's been wounded by the enemy or someone else. And God says He'll save us, He'll heal us, and He'll give us a reason to praise. Amen? Believe the Lord for that. And is there just one more? One more. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow in His steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth, who when He was reviled, Reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. There it is again. And this time it's past tense. New Testament. It's past tense because Jesus did a finished work upon the cross. Amen? And that's what this whole passage is talking about. Because Jesus gave us the remedy for sin, the only reason Satan has any foothold in your life to mess with you in any respect, to afflict you with sickness or disease, number one, as a believer, is only if God allows it, and that means God can stop it when He wants. It may be for a purpose to refine our faith, but sin has been dealt with, and that's the only thing that gives the devil a foothold in our life. If we dealt with sin, laid it at the foot of the cross, we have healing purchased for us. Amen? Amen? You believe that? We have healing purchased for us through Christ's precious blood that was spilled out on Calvary. And we need to stand on that. By your stripes, Lord, today I am healed. Amen? If you heal me, you're going to not do a halfway job. You're going to heal me to the uttermost. You're going to save me to the uttermost. Hebrews 7, 25. You're going to deliver me to the uttermost. So I don't know what your need is today, but I know in my spirit, and I know others, again, that are minister friends of mine, have posted this week on social media or talked about in uh, uh, Sunlight Broadcasting Programming that God is getting ready to do a work of healing. Amen? That's why we're seeing such a stirring of the enemy to try and get us to doubt that. Because I believe God's getting ready to do that. And so if you have a need today for healing, we want to pray. We're going to take a few moments to pray. I'm going to ask uh, if, if Wendy, I didn't ask her this before service, but I'm going to ask if Wendy would mind. Um, uh, Tanya and I are going to come down front. And would you pray for us? Uh, those who are watching online, most of you may have seen some of our Facebook posts. I need healing in my body. The Lord has been touching me and I've been, been experiencing improvement, but I'm not 100%. So pray for that, but then also Tanya's parents uh, in Florida, the Tampa area, were in a very bad car accident yesterday, and uh, thankfully God spared their life. They didn't uh, have life-threatening injuries. Uh, it appears they're going to be okay, uh, but Tanya's mom has some cracked ribs, five cracked ribs, and a punctured lung. Her dad uh, is having some ab abdominal pain, so they're checking him out. He had a liver transplant about nine years ago, eight years ago, 
And so they were really wanting to be careful and cautious with that. But I was wondering if, uh, if Tony and I had come down, if, if uh, Wendy, if you could lead out in prayer for that. And then we're going to pray for some other needs as well. But we want to pray for those who are sick today. And if you're watching online and you have a praise report, maybe God's already brought a healing. Share that on the comments on this live feed. If you have a prayer request, we may not mention it in this live service because uh, it's a shortened service today uh, due to the family emergency. But we will see it and we will pray for those throughout the week, and we want to believe God for your touch and your healing, but Tommy, would you join me, and the girls, you can too, and uh, just have Wendy lead us in prayer, uh, if you don't mind. Lord God, what a miracle of 
medical science that they could even do this. Thank you for giving wisdom and skill to the doctors in this surgery. God, we're just so grateful that things are going well for John. We pray for a complete and a speedy recovery, Lord God, that he would have testimonies, Lord, of how you've been with him, how you've helped him in this process. Give a peace that passes understanding to all of the children who are there, undoubtedly uh, concerned about this whole situation. Lord, we just pray that you'll work all things together for good. Lord, I even pray that they, if it's possible, that they can have a witness to this donor's family of Jesus Christ. Lord, that they can not only express their thanksgiving for this donation to this family, but God, that they can minister Jesus to them. I know that's the heart of the Hoffman family. Lord, I just pray that, Lord, there'll be so many testimonies of your healing touch, of how you've worked in this situation. We just give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. We're looking for a good report in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want us to pray as well this week uh, for, uh, or for this morning for Norma's cousin, uh, Jerry and Norma. Her cousin uh, has some kids, and I don't know, I think they may live in Ohio, uh, had some kids that went over for a neighborhood gathering, a sleepover or a birthday party, and uh, one of the adults at the party had COVID-19, and so the whole family is very concerned and having to be tested. Um, they don't have any symptoms yet, so praise the Lord for that. But our concern, and so let's pray for Norma's cousin's family, and uh, believe the Lord to, uh, to bring a good report from that. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Jerry and Norma, for Norma's cousin's family. Lord, I just pray that there would be a good report. Lord, you said that Psalm 91, that no plague would touch your people, Lord God. If we look to you, we trust you. Lord, we pray that that would be the case in this situation. Lord, we're thankful that they were able to find out what was going on. But Lord, we pray that when they're tested, that the results would come back negative, God. That there would be no trace of COVID-19, no symptoms, no problems. God, we just plead the blood of Jesus over this family today. Give them a peace that passes understanding. Let them know that you are their keeper. You are their sustainer. You are the giver of life to them, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that you'll minister your touch, your healing to them today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. I want us to lift up as well uh, Candy, a deaf lady that attends our church. She just recently had wrist surgery, and uh, she's recovering from that. And she is scheduled for ankle surgery uh, if the Lord does not touch her uh, in August. And so I want us to pray for Candy, that God would minister to her. And uh, she also has some financial needs and uh, trying to get a place of her own. And so let's pray for Candy this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And we lift up Candy to you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for her faith in you. We thank you for uh, the relationship that she has with many in this church. And Lord, I just pray that you'll give her a complete and full recovery from this wrist surgery that she just had a couple of weeks ago. God, give her full range of motion. God, give her a healing touch. Give her relief from the problems that she was having that made this procedure necessary. God, just let her know that you've touched her. Lord, I pray you touch her ankle, Lord God, that's been injured as well, that's scheduled for surgery in August. Lord, I pray that this surgery would not even be necessary, that you would do a creative miracle, God, that you would speak the word. Lord, that we would hear a testimony, God, of how you heal Candy's ankle. Lord, let it increase her faith. God, let it encourage her to know that you have met this need. Lord, we'll just give you glory. We'll give you praise this morning for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Any other needs this morning of those who are here need for healing that we can pray for? All right. Well, let's, if you have one online and you'd like to share that with us again, share that in the comments and we'll see that. We'll be praying for that this week. But believe the Lord. Amen. God wants to heal. It's His will. And it says He is Jehovah, which means He's a covenant-keeping God. He's Jehovah Rophe, our healer. And that means He's going to keep this covenant of healing. Amen? And we know that because of what Jesus did at the cross. We want to believe the Lord for that. All right? We're going to go into some more songs this morning before we receive communion. Let's just worship the Lord. Give Him our hearts a little bit more this morning in worship.
just so grateful for that finished work, for that precious sacrifice that you made to give us life and life more abundantly. Where would we be without your cross this morning? Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We give you praise.
you, Jesus, that your blood still has its power. It's able to save. It's able to deliver. It's able to heal this morning. God, I just pray that we'll rest, God, in your all-sufficiency. We'll rest in the power of your blood today, that you'll bring renewing, refreshing, that you'll bring victory, Lord, to those who are trusting in your great sacrifice today. Hallelujah. We just give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you for the blood today. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. We're going to receive the Lord's Supper. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to look at uh, verse, starting with verse 23. And this morning, uh, rather than serving you, we've got our communion set apart. The bread is in one cup, the juice is in another. And that way we're following the rules. Amen. Lord, help us. <laughs> but we want you to be healthy and whole. And so we've, uh, we've tried to comply with what they've requested of us. So if you just grab one of the cups has the bread in it, the other one has the juice that way, we're reducing the amount of hands that have to uh, touch communion this morning. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, after the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread, drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So we want to take into consideration as we remember what Jesus did. Why did God set this up as an ordinance of the church, this and baptism? To remember what Jesus came to do. Amen? And I guarantee you those 12 apostles who witnessed, I witnessed, all that Jesus suffered on the Via Dolorosa, all the mockings and scourgings, all the torture of being crucified, carrying your own cross, all the things that we know Scripture talks about, those things were emblazoned on their minds and their hearts, and they could never forget it. And we should never forget as well the great sacrifice that purchased our redemption. Amen? God's redemption plan. We're only redeemed, not because of our good works, but because of Christ's finished work. And so I'm going to ask Brianna to put this video on, and as this video plays, it's going to talk about the blood of Jesus. Would you come and receive your elements, take a, a cup that has the cracker cup with the juice, and just hold it, we'll receive together once the video is done. During this video, would you examine your heart? If there's anything between you and the Lord, confess it to God, say, God, forgive me. We don't want to receive these elements unworthily, meaning that what they represent isn't really representing what's going on in our life. If there's sin in our lives... These elements represent Jesus taking care of our sin. And so we need to confess that to the Lord, put it under the blood as the saying is, meaning just repent of it, ask the Lord's forgiveness, and then when we receive, we'll be receiving in a worthy manner, and uh, these, these elements will represent what Jesus did for us to free us from sin. And so as this video plays, I want to invite you to come, receive your elements. If you're there at home and you have juice and, and bread or a cracker, you can join us. And receive together. Let's remember the Lord's death and all that He did for us at Calvary, what it purchases, purchases for us today. And let's rejoice in that. But let's examine ourselves uh, while, you, uh, while the video plays and then we'll receive together. You can go ahead and come.
Praise the Lord. His blood is enough. Amen. His blood was spilled out for you, for me, so, so we could be free. So take that cracker in your hand. Let's thank the Lord this morning before we receive for what this bread represents. There's no power in this cracker. It just represents the power of Christ's broken body. Amen. It's an emblem. It's a symbol. We don't worship the symbol. Amen. We worship the genuine, which is Jesus and what he did for us. And let's thank him for what his broken body, what this cracker uh, symbolizes today uh, before we receive. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your redemption plan. Lord, you didn't destroy us and start all over again. Lord, you redeemed us. You, Lord, helped us to get free of our sins. And we're just thankful for that. We thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your perfect example. That you are the word become flesh. That you dwelt among us. You gave us the example of how to live a righteous life. Doing the will of the Father by the help of the Holy Spirit. And you obeyed even unto death. Even going to the cross. So that sin would no longer be our master. God, we thank you for your broken body today. What this bread represents. And Lord, we receive with thanksgiving uh, this communion bread today. Thanking you for all that you did for us at Calvary. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let's receive together. Praise the Lord. This juice represents the blood of Jesus. And the blood of bulls and goats is what sealed the old covenant. And it was very temporary. It was to point to a Savior, a Messiah that would come. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, uh, tells us that Jesus' sacrifice was a once and for all sacrifice. If you were to calculate the amount of lambs and sacrificial animals that were sacrificed under the old covenant, it would overwhelm you the millions of animals that were used to cover our sins until Christ came. But today we ought to be grateful that His sacrifice was a once and for all sacrifice. We don't have to add anything to it. You can't take away from it because it's what we needed to have a pure relationship, covenant love relationship with God. And so let's thank God for what this juice represents this morning, uh, Christ's blood. Heavenly Father, we come again in Jesus' name thanking you for the blood of your son Jesus. Jesus, we thank you that you persevered even to the cross in your obedience and spilled out your life's blood so that we might be free. We thank you that this juice represents your blood that is the seal, it is the, the affirmation of the new covenant, the new testament that we have. Lord, we don't have to offer up animal sacrifice as just a, a temporary covering of our sins. Our sins are as far as the east is from the west when we put our faith in you. Lord, you have thrown them into your sea of forgetfulness because of the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for that finished work today. We thank you for what this juice represents. And we receive it with thanksgiving, remembering your great sacrifice in Jesus' name. Let's receive together. Hallelujah. We're going to close out with this one last song, Unworthy of the Blood. And let's just thank the Lord for his sacrifice, amen, for his finished work on our behalf.
for joining us. Uh, we just pray the presence of the Lord will be with you this week. That you'll stand on the things that God has been saying in this refuel service. He's your healer. Amen. He's your way maker. He's your peace speaker. Trust Him to be that this week. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for being with us. Thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, I pray that we'll have a song in our heart, that we'll have the joy of the Lord as our strength this week. God, as we remember what you've spoken to us in this time of refuel, praise, prayer, and communion, God, help us to remember that you're our healer. Lord, that you can make a way where there seems to be no way. You can make us every whit whole, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I pray we'll help, we're, we will hear testimonies, God, of how you've touched lives. Lord, even in our online listeners, Lord God, give us a great week this week. Keep us close to you throughout the week. Lord, the word that you planted in our hearts today, let us share that with others that you bring across our path so that they might be pointed to Jesus and receive the hope and the help and the healing as well. Lord, we'll just give you glory. We'll give you praise for all that's done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. God bless you.